stage. One of the biggest questions he's facing is who his quarterback is going to be. Who replaces Bryce Young? It's been a long time since Alabama had a quarterback question. He was the coach yesterday. We have three guys that are competing for that position right now. I don't think anybody has actually separated themselves yet to this point, and I don't think it's something that we're trying to rush. So I think we got to let this sort of develop uh, and make sure we let the cake bake until somebody separates themselves. All right, so look, I mean, they haven't had to bake a cake in a really long time because they've had this extraordinary embarrassment of riches at quarterback over the past seven years. Three of them first round draft picks. Jalen Hurts started the Super Bowl last year. All of them led Bama to at least one national title game appearance over the course of that time. So let's bring in Heather and Paul again from SEC Media Days in Nashville. Again, Bama's had all these great quarterbacks. Uh, Heather, do Saban and Alabama now have a quarterback problem? Problem, I think, is a bit of a strong word. Concern is fair. If you look at the Heisman finalists during the CFP era, 23 quarterbacks have been Heisman finalists, Greeny, and more than half of them, 15, have made it to a CFP semifinal. So there's a direct correlation between strong elite quarterback play and postseason play. But Nick Saban said yesterday if he can get a quarterback to manage the game, get the ball to the playmakers, and they can get back to running the ball better, this offense should be okay. He told us yesterday that he thinks this offensive line is better than it has been, that they have to get back to running the ball and that smash mouth football like when Derrick Henry was there. What, what do you think, Paul? Is, is that a, a realistic way for them to go about playing in the era in which we currently live? I think the, the most important thing to remember, Greeny, is he, he, nobody really won the job after spring. And what did Nick Saban do? He went into the portal to get Buckner from Notre Dame who got beat out for the job there. Uh, you know, part of the story there is that Tommy Reese came over from Notre Dame, so that gives Buckner a little bit of a maybe a heads up. But Jalen Milrow last year was a backup to Bryce Young, which is a pretty good job. But in the one time that he started, he he fumbled the ball. He couldn't hold on to it and he really didn't excel. Ty Simpson is the name to watch. Uh, he, he's been banged up a little bit, but but he's coming. He was a five star player, son of a coach. But I, I've just given you a lot of verbiage, Greeny. Alabama mm -hmm. doesn't have a quarterback yet, and that's a problem. Absolutely. When you need that many words to explain a situation, it usually means that you have a problem. And so <laughs> do they, Heather? Is, is Georgia a prohibitive favorite to win the SEC this year? It feels like it's been a long time since that has been anyone but Saban's team. On paper right now, I don't see why anyone should pick Alabama instead of Georgia because even though Georgia has a new quarterback too and Kirby Smart said Carson Beck is in the lead right now, he hasn't officially earned that starting spot yet. I think Georgia has more answers around that quarterback than Alabama at this point. You look at tight end Brock Bowers, you look at that defense, I think that they're a complete team with less questions. So yes, I would pick Georgia right now to win the SEC. I don't even know if Alabama's going to win the West. Yeah, they didn't a year ago. LSU winning the West last year after beating Bama in that incredibly close game. Now, Paul, you sort of intimated it yesterday. Nick Saban's legacy is secure. Of that, there is no question. He's accomplished more than anyone ever has. But right this minute, is Kirby the king of college football? Greeny, Greeny, Greeny. You, you can't let me get out of this place before I have to answer that question on your show. <laughs> Kirby Smart has surpassed Nick Saban today. Now, I don't need somebody to tell me about the records. We all know that. But in today's world, in, the, in, in 2023, Kirby Smart is a better coach than Nick Saban and has a better program than Nick Saban. The roster is better. The, uh, we, we, we have a, there's a quarterback conversation at Georgia, but it's not, it's not a conundrum. Uh, and that, that is not insulting, though, to Nick Saban for this reason. Kirby Smart is on the verge, perhaps, of a three-peat. Uh, that's why we are saying what we are saying. And, and I think we're, it hurts Nick Saban the most because Kirby Smart has essentially taken the Saban model and possibly perfected it in Athens. And, you know, yesterday when you said that, Heather suggested she might come right over and push you off your chair. And I just want to sort of go behind the curtain for everyone just so you can get a sense. If she wanted to, she could. Well, let me show you just how close. You know, TV makes everything look so big. Look how close together the two of them are sitting. Harry, look at this. You, I mean, you, Heather and Paul. You stay over there right now. <laughs> <laughs> the we can all wrestle. I said exactly.